And now it's time for learning more about our lives as students, our body as humans, and our future as happy, healthy people. The APU and AUV Podcast Network presents the Student Health and Happiness Podcast with your host Russell Freeman. Welcome, everyone, to our AUV Student Health and Happiness Podcast. My name is Dr. Russell Freeman. I'm a chiropractic physician from the United States and a professor of health science at AUV. And today, I want to talk about social media, in particular, its risks and safety, and its effects on our body, our mind, and our spirit. Now, I was in my fifties already when Facebook and the other ones like that came on the scene. And since then, the world, myself, and the people around me have all been very highly impacted by the internet. And in just a short time, we've gone from nothing to dependence and even addiction to the net and social media. I'm guilty of this, and I wanted to know why. So, have you ever wondered what would your life be like without social media? Do you have a lot of friends or followers on social media? Are they important to you? Do you ever feel like you have some stress that's related to social media, constant mobile phone use, and screen time hours that you spend every day? I want you to think about your personal habits and how you've been feeling and thinking lately. Are you satisfied that your physical and psychological health are improving doing, due to your social media and screen time? In our topic today, you'll discover if you need to give yourself your best advice, make some positive changes, and take control of your time and of your thinking. So, what would your life be like without social media? Let me share with you what one of my students recently had to say about this. "Quote: My guess is that would it be it would be a lot more productive. I would finally be able to focus better and get more tasks done on time." Additionally, the time gained from giving up social media would enable me to pursue other things like learning a new language and reading. Also, I might be able to think in more depth, coming up with better ideas, better problem solving. That's not to mention the solitary inner peace one would get in the absence of the constant buzzing distractions of social media, which could lead to generally more mindfulness. Now. This was very well said, and it's kind of the reason why I made this program today. Because I think it's on the minds of all of us. Young people are spending much more of their time online, and the question is: Is this healthy? People learn best and achieve the most from life experience and independent thought. Is this a byproduct of social media? Along with that. We have an innate desire for human interaction. Our learning, achievement, thinking, and relationships therefore benefits of social media and the internet. Researchers at the University of Technology in Sydney have discovered forty-six specific harmful physical and mental effects of using social networks. These include mental health problems, impacts on work or school productivity, and security or privacy issues. The study breaks the dozens of social media dangers down into six degrees of social media harm, and I want to share those with you. The first one is the cost of social exchange. This includes both psychological harms such as depression, anxiety, jealousy, envy, and other costs like wasting time, energy, and money. The second thing is annoying content. These harms appeal when users view content that annoys or upsets or irritates them. This typically includes disturbing, violent, sexual, or obscene content. The third degree of social media harm is privacy concerns. These are threats to your personal privacy related to storing, repurposing. Or sharing personal information with third parties. Number four is security threats. These are harms from fraud or deception, which can emerge from phishing or social engineering scams. Number five is cyberbullying. 
This includes any abuse or harassment by groups or individuals who send abusive messages, lie about others, stalk individuals, or spread rumors. And number six is low performance. This refers to the negative impact social media use can have on your job and on your academic performance. Some of the most common negative impacts included psychological harms, such as jealousy, loneliness, anxiety, reduced self-esteem, malicious shaming, scams, financial loss, and software risks. So who's most at risk for mental and social problems from the internet? The answer, maybe you already know. It's young people. The young mind is the most adaptive, versatile, and quick learning. That's why children learn languages and music so easily. But the young mind is also the most susceptible to attack and manipulation. The young mind is not fully developed or experienced enough to recognize true versus fake, good versus bad, informative versus manipulative. And young minds can differentiate interest from addiction, excitement from danger, and these are very important distinctions to be able to make. Many students who live in the countryside or the provinces return home to visit family during holidays and school vacations, and there's no internet there. Would that be hard for you? Can you actually go 24 hours without using social media? If not, who's really in control here? The question is, do you use the internet or does the internet use you? It's common to think that you are the customers of social media and internet sites. They want you to feel like that. But the truth is, the advertisers and the content developers are the customers. and You are the product being sold. So consider social media like a garden in which the advertisers and content producers are the trees and you are the fruit. The garden itself is Facebook or TikTok or whatever social media provider. And it's constantly, these providers are constantly manipulating and adjusting their environment based on what produces the most fruit. That is, your screen time, your attention, and your interaction. They are all manipulated for the benefit of the social sites and advertisers, not for you. So, Obviously, there's a lot of benefits, but how do you derive maximum benefit with minimum risk? So far, we focused on the dangers and the risks. It's called the dark side of the internet and social media. But let's be honest, the benefits are huge. And there are good reasons why to use these tools to benefit our lives and our world. So how do we get the best maximum benefit from our devices and screen time without causing harm to ourselves and others. Well, here is my one, two, three list of best internet and social media use practices. Ta-da! Some suggestions and solutions that anyone and everyone should apply. There's only three. Please remember them. Number one, for your physical health, limit your daily screen time to eight hours a day maximum if you can. And take frequent breaks to stretch, change positions, drink fluids. More time is okay, sometimes, but not every time. The more screen time, the more breaks and activity time you will require. Also for your physical health, try rotating your tasks so that you're using different muscles, different positions, different movements, different parts of your brain, and different focal distances. Good ergonomics is the next thing. Ergonomics means adjusting the environment, the tasks, and the tools to fit your body. This means selecting, adjusting, and sitting in your chair comfortably. Make sure that you adjust your work surfaces and the keyboard height and its position so that your arms and leg and hip angles are at 90 to 100 degrees. We call those open angles in a joint. You don't want to be hunched over, with your elbows, your knees, and your hips in a closed angle of less than 90 degrees. Next thing would be to sit up straight. This is a postural issue. Don't let the keyboard pull you into it. Don't be pulled into the keyboard or let your head stay in a dropped forward position. 
Keep your head in a position as if you were driving a car. Using your laptop and phone in bed is not the healthy choice. There's a negative impact even after a short period of time. So avoid the temptation. The second things that you need to worry about are for your knowledge. To be informed and not persuaded. You need to know the difference. Information is not fact unless it's from a reliable source and is documented and verifiable. What you read on Facebook and any social media is not news. It's opinion at best and deception meant to affect your mind and actions at worst. Remember that rumors and what everyone thinks is only that. Determine for yourself what is true and what is not true, what is right or wrong, what is good or bad. Respect your own ability to think well and value your common sense and instincts, not someone else's. The third thing is for your mental health. It's good to see what other people think and do. You get new ideas, motivation, and knowledge outside of your daily personal experiences. It's fun. It's interesting. And this is the right idea and the greatest benefit. But envy is the end of any benefit you may get. Envy is wanting what someone else has, often with some resentment or self-devaluation included. If you compare yourself in a competitive way to others, either online or in daily life, when you envy the fashionista or wishing that was you or the new toys being shown off, thinking if you had more, you would be more, then you're disrespecting yourself by choosing to feel jealous or insecure and losing any benefit you may have otherwise enjoyed. The truth about the displays on the internet is actually a lie. People do not lead magical, glamorous lives with popularity overflowing. You will never see their truth. By choosing to feel jealous, choosing to feel envy, choosing self-hating, or aiming hate at others, you are beating your head against a wall of your own making. It's a lose-lose situation. And there's a term for people that keep making this unhealthy and necessary choice. It's the definition of, pardon me for saying this, but stupid. Stupid happens when you make a mis- not when you make a mistake. Stupid happens when you don't learn from it and you make it again and again and again. So trying to be someone or something you are not will not have a happy ending for you. Your friends care about the real you, not the fake one. And so you need to know, Who are your friends? Who are your real friends? If you have one or a few true friends, you're really lucky. If you have lots, you are delusional or not defining your friend correctly. Jealousy, envy, and self-hating, insecure people find it difficult to be and have true friends. It's said lightly, but really it's true that you can't love others unless you love yourself the way you are, not the way you want to be or someone else is. It's like instructions to put the air mask on yourself before helping others in emergency. You have to be comfortable with yourself before you can really be comfortable with other people. Now, shouldn't you take care of your heart and mind so that you can be love and love fully? Don't let a screen and a keyboard be your life coach. Don't let it be your judge or your guide. That comes only from within you and through real relationships and personal contact with real people and situations. Never mind about your 2,000 followers and friends from Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok. They are not real, they are not your friends, and they could not care less if you get damaged. Some of them might even like it. Well, thanks for listening to our show today. I hope you'll remember... To focus on your best self, your relationships and real friends, on being a true friend, by loving and trusting yourself first, then you can be the happiest and healthiest you. Bye now. <laughs>